Hey all, today I'm going to be telling you about the potential economic collapse and what you can do to either avoid it or to try and minimise your losses. I'm going to be splitting this video into like a US perspective and a UK perspective because both of these countries are in very different positions in terms of available government support and daily virus cases. I do think that any investor, saver or homeowner should be very sceptical and cautious at the moment because there's a very real chance that the US could enter a big recession and there's also still quite a big possibility that the UK could also enter that same recession. So how can we as savers and investors not lose too much money? But before we get started, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's get into the video. So if you haven't been living under a rock for the past six months or so, you'll probably know that the world isn't really in a great place at the moment. A global pandemic has left over 20 million people infected and over a million dead worldwide. A large portion of these cases are in more emerging parts of the world, such as India, Brazil and parts of Africa. But some of the worst hit places have also been the US and Europe. This has left a 33% decline in the S&P 500, which has interestingly recovered back up to all-time highs, and also about a 33% decline in the FTSE 100 as well, which has recovered, but not quite as well. Now the fact that the S&P 500 has almost recovered is really, really strange, because we're still in the middle of the global pandemic. Cases are at an all-time high at the moment, there's around 5.2 million people that were infected in the US, and around half of these have recovered, but that still leaves around 2.5 million people that are infected right now. But what makes it even more worrying is that daily cases in the US have soared from around 25,000 new cases a day back in June, all the way up to between 40 to 60,000 new cases a day in August. The UK, however, is a bit of a different story, and virus cases aren't increasing quite as fast. In the UK, there's been around 300,000 people infected, and around half of those have recovered. But interestingly, the daily cases have actually fallen from around four to 6,000 cases a day back in June, down to around 500 to 1,000 cases a day in August. This is obviously good for the UK, as it seems that for whatever reason, the measures that were put in place in the UK seem to have worked a little bit better than the measures that were put in place in the US. Although saying that, over the last week, the daily cases in the UK has increased from 500 new cases a day all the way up to around 1,000 new cases a day. So this could suggest that we're starting to fall back downhill and could be entering a second wave. It's also concerning that more and more countries are reintroducing lockdown measures after relaxing them, I guess due to seeing an increase in daily cases. New Zealand has re-entered lockdown, parts of Europe are also re-entering a lockdown, and also parts of the UK even are starting to lock back down again. So this could suggest that we are actually heading for a second wave. In terms of US employment, unemployment rose from around 3 to 4%, all the way up to 15% in April. Since then, unemployment has actually been falling each month, and it's also been falling at a good rate, beating the estimate set by the Breu of Labour Statistics each and every month. Unemployment's currently fallen to around 10%, which is obviously a good fall, a good reduction, and it's reduced by about half of the increase, but is obviously still very high. An unemployment rate of around 10% is about the same as the peak of the 2008 recession, so obviously it's good that it has reduced from 15% down to 10%, but obviously it's not that great because that is still a very high rate of unemployment. Talks of further US stimulus are also starting to break down. However, it's thought that President Trump could enforce new stimulus packages and has also spoken about cutting taxes and maintaining unemployment benefits. But what about the UK? How is the UK faring in terms of unemployment and furlough? And furlough is the stimulus scheme set up to provide benefits to those that are currently not working. The UK unemployment levels are currently a little bit more masked. Unemployment levels are sat at the moment at around 1.4 million, which is only very slightly higher than pre-pandemic levels of 1.3 million, and much lower than 2008 levels of around 2.5 million. But what's really interesting are the additional numbers behind this. On top of the 1.4 million people that are currently unemployed, there's also 500,000 people that are currently just not working, such as those on zero hour contracts and also working shift work at bars and pubs and different venues like that. There's also around 9.6 million people currently on furlough. And obviously that's the scheme that's set up to pay employees around 80% of their salary each month. 
but obviously a lot of these employees don't know whether they're gonna have a job to go back to after the furlough scheme expires or after the pandemic dissipates. All of this data is also taken as at the end of July and therefore it's pretty much bang up to date. The furlough scheme is also starting to taper off. The government are only going to be supplying around 70% of employees' salaries from September and then 60% of employees' salaries from October and then the scheme closes at the end of October. And therefore employers are gonna to have to decide whether they want to cover that additional increase back up to the 80% or up to the 100% or not. Now it's yet to be seen actually how many of these 9.6 million people will be able to return to work. And there's a few different scenarios of what could actually happen. The first scenario is that everyone returns to work. Very few businesses across the UK fail and the UK is absolutely great again. The second scenario is that none of this 9.6 million people return to work. That would make unemployment at around 10 or 11 million people which would be around four times that of the peak of the 2008 recession. And that would lead the UK into potentially the biggest recession that the UK has ever seen. The third scenario, which is obviously what's gonna happen, is that it's gonna be somewhere between everyone going back to work and no one going back to work. Somewhere in the middle here. Some people are gonna to return to work, but some people obviously aren't gonna to return to work and some businesses are likely to fail. Although it's currently unknown whereabouts on this scale it'll actually be. Hopefully, as the daily virus cases have reduced from their peaks in May and June time, obviously to where they are now in August time, hopefully most of these 9.6 million people will be able to go back to work and hopefully most of the businesses will survive. But considering cases are starting to pick back up again, it's very possible that we could enter a second wave. And this would obviously end up more on the side of most people on furlough losing their jobs and not being able to return to work and a lot of businesses failing across the UK. But on top of this, a number of other schemes that have been set up are also coming to an end. In the US, a number of eviction protection schemes, mortgage holiday schemes, unemployment benefits and other aids that have been put in place are soon coming to an end. This means that not only are millions and millions of people currently unemployed in the US, but also that their expenditure is gonna start increasing back up. People are gonna be forced to pay their rent or their mortgages or face eviction or foreclosure. This is gonna massively harm and massively impact the US economy because obviously loads and loads of people out there are gonna be doing absolutely anything they can to avoid eviction, which means that they're not gonna be going out and spending any money anywhere else other than paying their rent or their mortgage, which is obviously gonna massively impact US businesses around the country. Similarly, in the UK, mortgage holiday programs and loan payment holiday schemes are also coming to an end. Economy boosting schemes such as Eat Out to Help Out and VAT cuts will also be coming to an end similar to the US. On top of this, debt levels are also at an all-time high, especially in the leveraged loan market. A quick definition, a leveraged loan is a loan given to a business or a company that already has high levels of debt or a bad credit record. These businesses are obviously kind of already likely to fail because they're already struggling. And obviously if the business does fail, it means that the leveraged loan is gonna be worthless and won't be paid back. This is obviously gonna to lead to the leveraged loan market and potentially wider debt market starting to collapse. This could end up being similar to 2008 where the consumer mortgage market ended up collapsing after millions and millions of homeowners failed to repay their mortgage. Just obviously this time it will be the leveraged loan market instead of the consumer mortgage market. This would have a really big impact on the banks as obviously it would massively affect their liquidity and just their general operations. Now interestingly the 2007 to 2008 subprime mortgage market was worth around 1.3 trillion and the 2020 leveraged loan market is worth around 1.3 to 1.4 trillion. So a collapse in this market could have a very similar impact to the 2008 recession. Now adding on top of this, the massive amounts of people that are unemployed and facing eviction or foreclosure, this could really have a really real impact on the US and the UK economy. So the all important question and the all important answer, what can you do to minimize your losses? But first, if you made it this far into the video, be sure to comment down below saying investment so that I know that you've made it this far into the video. Firstly, would the real estate market or the property market be a good place to invest at the moment? 
And I think this is an interesting one because it could be a good investment and it also might not be a good investment. If we do end up having a second wave, then lots of people currently on furlough will end up losing their jobs. And if the US unemployment rates go back up, then a lot of people will be without an income. And if people are without an income, they won't be able to afford their mortgage. And if they can't afford their mortgage, they'll face foreclosure and eviction, which will obviously have a massive impact on property prices. So number two, what about leaving your money in a bank account? And in the UK, there's insurances and protections in place that protect up to £75,000 of your money per bank in the event that the bank goes under. So obviously that would mean that your money is safe. However, interest rates have been cut to spare on investment. And as the demand for these products increases, inflation will also follow. In 2008, we saw inflation of around 4%, which is obviously much higher than usual inflation of around 1% to 2%. And it's expected that we could see inflation of potentially up towards double digits. This basically means that your money will be worth less as the price of everything around you increases. Therefore, even though your money will be safe, it won't be worth quite as much. So number three, what about the stock market? And this could potentially be a good idea as obviously the stock market has already rallied back up to pre-pandemic highs, but it almost could certainly come crashing right back down, especially in some of the more susceptible areas such as retail, travel and banks and finance. Therefore, it could potentially be worth holding stocks in some other industries, such as tech, which has been largely unaffected as a result of the pandemic, as more and more people are working from home and continuing to work. Or potentially other industries such as utilities, because at the end of the day, everyone still needs water and electricity. So there could be some good places to invest your money in the stock market. Other ideas could be investing in bonds and other low risk forms of investment, or investing in other stores of value, such as gold, silver, or Bitcoin. Link down below to Coinbase, where you can get an extra $10 of Bitcoin when you spend $100. But what other practical steps can you take to protect yourself? If you haven't already, I would definitely advise cutting your spending and working on improving your saving and saving more. This will obviously just mean that you have more cash reserves in case of emergencies. If you unfortunately do find yourself becoming unemployed, at least you'll still have those cash reserves to continue paying your rent or mortgage to avoid eviction and foreclosure. You'll also still be able to afford the necessities such as food and water and electricity to obviously keep you in a more comfortable situation until the pandemic passes and you can find new employment. Hopefully this video has been helpful and has really enlightened you to the potential market crash and the potential economic collapse that we could be facing. As always guys, be sure to watch some of my other videos. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.